What's up everyone? I exalt here and I'm back with a new anthem video. This time I want to propose a let's play solo. This is the first one in the series. I'll try to post that every Tuesday or Fridays. I don't know, I'm not sure, it depends on how it's working. The goal is to simply discuss the advanced game mechanics of Anthem. I'm not really interested in the story, I'm not really interested in the lore, but I really wanted to play these missions solo. And it's impossible to complete Anthem on your own. You need to play with other people to do that if you want to have 100% completion. I might not be exactly the first one on YouTube to do that. I know there's much competition between many YouTube channels. Those who know me already know that I'm really interested in Mass Effect multiplayer, that I've been playing Mass Effect for a long time now. If that's the outlook you want to have on Anthem, then you knocked at the right door. Let's go! So let's start right away. This is the very first mission in the game. This is the moment when you choose your javelin and I chose the interceptor because it's my favorite javelin to be honest. And I played with the demo on it and I found it so great. I mean, the aura combo mechanic is very interesting. You can see my build on the right. It allows you to crowd control the enemies. And also you have great mobility with this character. I will be using Venom Bomb as well as Plasma Star and I don't have gear for the support system. Unfortunately, the only powers I had so far were the powers that I was supposed to have because this was the beginning of the game. And this is the mission Lost Arcanist and I played it private. So I'm just going to put a few excerpts because I don't think that's very interesting for everyone to be watching a video for 40 minutes. So I just selected a few relevant excerpts. Don't worry, I did not remove anything from the gameplay, especially the fights, the enemy factions, and so on and so forth. This is Tarsus Falls. This is the first free play area you have access to. Before I started the mission, I just looked around if there were any collectibles because there was a um, challenge on it. And you had to find in the world a few well documents, things like that, in order to complete the uh, collectibles challenge. I found two. So there isn't much to do. And well, let's go. This is a very linear mission and the only faction you have to fight against is the Scar. The first thing you want to do is to go near this camp. The location Tassen Davis must be close. I'm detecting the camp's shortwave radio. You can loot if you want. There's, uh, you know, some plants here and there. Eventually you will have to activate this device in order to start the mission for real. But the purpose of the mission is clearly to follow the signals. It's it's not really difficult. You have many roads you can take. For example, here I'm going on the right instead of on the left because I'm 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 the guy interested in exploration. Sorry about this. Eventually I found the document, so I'm putting the footage here. Right here. This was a point of view. The high road overlook. And this overlook shows this castle, this abandoned castle. I don't know what to call it, really. There's a document over there. So that's the first thing. Your student is a thief. And there's another thing you want to pick up. It's about the last sentinel. And once you're ready, well, you can just follow the objective. It's useless, you know, to try and explore the world. Unfortunately, it's not exactly as open as you might think on missions. If you go too far, you will be directly teleported to where you're supposed to be. If you go this way, there will be brutes as well as white life, but brutes are part of white life on day, as there's also these rabbits. 
I was just, you know, training a little. This was, um, I hadn't been playing Anthem for three weeks, so of course I had to train a little, especially against the Brute. I wanted to train on the combos. And in fact, I must say Venom Bomb is a very, very good primer. It's it's unbelievable. I, I, I didn't realize when playing the demo how effective Venom Bomb was. The Brute has been primed, and then you just have to detonate the combo using melee. Just look at this with the Brute, for example. How I destroy the Brute. And this was hard difficulty, really. Okay, going back to where you're supposed to be. Following the signals. And again, just follow the location to end up... Um, well, don't try to get into walls, as I just did. Eventually you will end up here and activate this object to start the first battle against the Scars. So the strategy here is very simple because it's only scar scrappers. So it's not, you know, it's not the toughest enemy in this faction. It's it's just the meat, the mooks, as we say. So basically, yeah. Um, what makes them dangerous is that if they are grouped, if they are standing together, then the fact that they are all shooting at you at the same moment can really destroy you, especially on harder difficulties. Here I must say I switched to normal difficulty, not because this was too difficult, but because um, the game sort of crashed, so I had to start over, and because the video was already very long on hard difficulty, I selected normal difficulty. Don't worry, I'll be honest with you, whenever I'm not playing on hard difficulty, but most of the time I am. It's basically what I wanted to do. I wanted to use this mission because there isn't any budget on this um, precise objective. You have to destroy the hives, as it's written. But if you don't do it, you can kill as much scar scrappers as you want. And there was a challenge, I don't know if you noticed at some point on the screen it was written. You had to kill um, 500 scars. It's not like Andromeda where it's the number of points by enemy that counts. It's rather the number of enemies you kill. You basically have to kill 500 scars. That's why it took time, you know, to destroy the house. just so that I could uh, cheese out the enemies and, you know, try to progress in my Scar Challenge. And again, th that's the only enemy you'll be fighting, really. And the moment you destroy the hives, two things can happen. On my first two playthroughs on hard and normal difficulties, I had several hives to destroy, but when I played it with other people, we only had one. So I'm not very clear on how this works, but basically if you have the scar challenge and you didn't take this mission, now would be the good time to do that. I believe there's around 6 or 7 uh, scrappers on the field. So it's basically like Mass Effect, you know, uh, especially Mass Effect Andromeda. So you see two extra hives here to destroy. I also try to vary my kill. I I'm not very familiar with the melee and all the mechanics this character has. And I'm still learning to fly, don't judge, don't be too judgmental. This was my first time playing with the Interceptor on the full game, so you know. The Interceptor has great controls, a great evade function as well. And the aura combo is so useful. Any enemy going around you when you have an aura will be immediately primed depending on the detonator you used. For example, if you detonated an acid combo, then your interceptor will have the acid aura and this will prime enemies going around you with the acid status, which is a great status.
is not probably as great as freezing the enemy because freezing the enemy is probably the most useful thing you can do when you want to, I, I don't know, crowd control or uh, for any other reasons really, even armored enemies that you can freeze in Anthem as you can freeze armored enemies. That's the big difference with Andromeda. So it's great power for crowd control, but it's also, strategically speaking, very interesting because basically if you know that you are about to detonate a combo and that this combo in turn will prime any enemies around, then you can make the best of crowd control to destroy a whole group of enemies. And if you do that, you will have the multi-kill reward. And the multi-kill reward is interesting not because it's the multi-kill and I'm so great to play, I'm the best player in the world, I'm not interested in that kind of shit really. What I'm interested in is how you can cheat out the game and how you can make the best of the game to enjoy the game actually. So here I try to vary my kills because by varying my kills I get more experience and if I get more experience then I can level up more easily of course. So once you destroy the hives, you will have to go to another area, let's call that area 2. And in this area, this is the exact same wave composition as what you just did. There's only scrappers, you won't find anything else, really. The big difference is that there isn't as much cover here as there was in the first area. In the first area you had a lot of cover, you could also use verticality in order to escape the enemy, you probably saw me do that twice or more, simply because when your shields break, it's better to go away for a little while. Because cover was removed, you have to find other ways for your shields to regenerate. Anthem is more forgiving as far as health gate is concerned. Health gate is this little amount of health you have remaining whenever you take too much damage, you know. Health gate also prevents you from, you know, being killed in one hit, for instance. That's very interesting. Now this is area 3, so this area is much bigger but it's based on the same idea as area 2, it's a big area, though the budget is not exactly the same. First, there's the first boss enemy you will encounter in Anthem, and that's the Scar Enforcer. So right now there's only Scrappers, but in a moment you will see the big boss coming in, the Enforcer, the guy with the Flamethrower. Also, depending on the weather conditions of this mission, you might have to deal with thunder. Thunder can just, you know, strike anywhere, and it seems that thunder likes to strike on the player, so it's another way that Bioware found to make you move all the time, you know. They don't want you to stick in one area and to cheese out the enemies. Here are the spawns. Let's kill the scrappers first. And let's wait for the Scar Enforcer to come through. If you are already familiar with Anthem, you might have already guessed how I'm going to deal with the Enforcer. It's kind of obvious. But remember that the Enforcer is very weak to combos as well, because it's only armor. The Enforcer hasn't got any shields, well, it has a physical shield, but that doesn't make him impervious to, you know, combos such as freezing combos or acid combos. So there's the boss, the first boss in the game, I'm really excited. Watch out for the flame 
The Enforcer is a mix between the Brute in Mass Effect 3 and, well, let me think for Mass Effect Andromeda, I can't really tell. It, it is as aggressive as the Brutes and the Berserkers in Andromeda, the Brutes in Mass Effect 3 and the Berserkers in Andromeda. But it's the first time really you have a, an enemy with a flamethrower, which can make it sort of impressive. But in fact, the real weakness of the Scar Enforcer is its mobility. It's very easy to escape from it, you know. And also something that you must know, if your armor, if your javelin receive the burning status because of, you know, the Scar Enforcer using the flamethrower, for instance, do not try to fly. If you do that, you won't be able to fly because your engines will overheat. And now I'm just taking some time to try out my uh, ultimate ability. And once you're finished playing, just activate this device and this will bring you to the last big area of this mission. It's called the dungeon. And this is basically how Anthem missions work. You start out in a very big area and little by little that will narrow down to one specific area, usually enclosed area, looking like a multiplayer map in Mass Effect game, for instance. This is the dungeon and the moment you get too close, there will be scars. Also, the first time you encounter scar destroyers, if you don't know about them, watch out my Scar in Depth video. The Scar Destroyer uses a mine, an acid mine. There's a whole plot element in Anthem about acidic weapons. If you already played the Stronghold, that was in the demo, the Tarrant Mines Stronghold, then you probably already know where these acid weapons come from. If you haven't, I'm not going to spoil anything. The goal, again, is not to focus on the lore and the story. You probably noticed I did not say much about the story, the plot and all, and so on and so forth. I'm more interested in wave compositions. For instance, here, it all depends on the number of players, in fact. If you're interested in uh, how waves work in Anthem, it's a bit different from Mass Effect because in Mass Effect, regardless of the number of players on the field, there was you know a certain amount of enemies, whether there was one player or more players. The base enemy here is the Scrappers and you have two destroyers and they respawn the moment you kill them as long as you don't destroy the hives. But again, this can be strategic as well. You can take your time to destroy the hives if you have the Scar Challenge. Because well, 500 enemies is not as fast as, as it was in Andromeda. In Andromeda, it was all about the points. A certain type of enemy was worth a certain amount of points. So if you killed, you know, a certain enemy types at the expense of others, then you could finish the, the challenge in one game, you know. Now it's not as easy as it used to and you have to look around the world, the open world, to find the enemies and try to finish the challenges. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, when I started the game there were three factions with 500 points to reach. The first faction I got was the Scars, because I used this trick I just explained in, in this video. And the second faction I got was the Dominion. I didn't expect that really, because in the demo the Dominion was sort of absent. I saw them once or twice, you know, after 24 hours of gameplay in the open and VIP demos. But uh, as far as the Dominion was concerned, I wasn't familiar with the Dominion as much as I was with other factions, like the Outlaws or the Scars.
So yeah, seeing the Dominion was sort of a surprise, and I I, I thought that the only faction whose challenge I could finish would would be the the Scars and the Outlaws. But no, unfortunately, it's the Outlaws that are the most difficult to find, in my opinion. If you had a different experience, then well. So this is the ultimate area in this mission. It's still in dungeon, but it's it's a bit bigger now, and there are several levels of verticality, and like the previous one, in the previous area, there was one central platform that you could use to cheese them out little by little, one by one. But in this case, it's a bit different, and also the wave composition is more aggressive in this last ultimate area. Uh, you still have scrappers, of course you do, and you also have destroyers, there are two destroyers on the field, and the last enemy is the Scar Enforcer, there is another Scar Enforcer coming in, and you have to kill it in order to successfully complete this mission. So you could use your ultimate ability against it, or you could use combos as well, Otherwise, well, it's not that difficult to deal with it. Uh, just use verticality. That is the strategy I keep using against enforcers. What makes the Scar Enforcers so impressive? It's not only the ability to burn your Javelin as it's happening to me right now. On higher difficulties, this simply destroy your shields and might bring you to health gates, but it won't kill you. Except if you are already at health gates, then it will kill you. Moving around the map, being mobile, because the Enforcer is not mobile at all. And also using combos repeatedly against them. When there is one Enforcer on the field, this is not uh, impossible really, even on harder difficulties. Uh, what makes it even more difficult is when you have several, and in some missions you might have three, you know. It's like the Brutes in Mass Effect 3, you know, in some, depending on the difficulty you're playing, you might have more Brutes than on other difficulties. The Scars use these um, red gates to come through. Basically, you have two spawn points. There's the Hives. The Hives are physically present on the map and the hives can be destroyed. The red portals, however, are more erratic. You don't really know when and how they are going to spawn. It might be just next to you, be very careful about that. Uh, it, it happened to me a lot, you know, just you are taking cover, uh, shooting at enemies and then you turn around and you realize that there's a spawn point just behind you. And this is something you don't want to find out too late, otherwise you're just as good as dead. And if you die on a mission, you have to start the stage all over again. It's not like random encounters on free play where you can just, you know, go back to where you died and you know, finish the work. Here you have to start all over again. And that's also the reason why some missions should be done after others, especially if you are playing solo as I am now. So why play solo, by the way? I didn't really explain why I wanted to play solo. Simply because I want to enjoy the story. In fact, the only experience I had with multiplayer on Anthem were not as good as what I expected. The first was a stronghold, and I found myself with speedrunners who wouldn't wait for the rest of the team. I already knew this stronghold, you know, this was not the first time I took the Tyrant Mine. But the problem is that for players who are not familiar with this mission, for players I don't know who didn't play the demo for instance, because there are many, 
it's not it's not pleasant actually to be always flying and always moving around without really taking the time to i don't know think strategically or to just understand what is happening so these people were just rushing the game and i don't know why they did that really So here again, I used the same strategy as in other areas. I took my time to finish the objective. Here, right here. These scars. I don't know what to think. Arcanists and scars often clash over shaper sites, but nothing like this. I must tell Tassin. Please. I need to return to Fort Tarsus. And here is Matthias ready to be brought back to Fort Tarsus. And now the mission is over. Uh, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a comment if you want me to, I don't know, delve into a couple of things I've said, but I didn't, you know, go further. Do not hesitate. I'm open to conversation. Thanks for watching and see you next time for the next episode. I exalt out. Bye.